This is the mathematically perfect racing line, the precise arc through a corner that allows racing drivers to carry the most speed through the bend, the widest arc allowing for the most speed. So why do racing drivers ignore this? If they are at the top of their game, why do they not drive on this geometrically perfect racing line? Well, let's dive into every type of racing line to explain. So what is this geometrically perfect racing line? Simply, it's the widest arc you could drew through a corner with a compass. The laws of circular motion say that the wider the arc, the faster the car can corner through it. Here I'm driving in a circle, but because the circle is small, I can't even get out of first gear. Now, if I pick up speed, the car understeers wide, but on this wider arc, I can go faster. So that is what a driver is trying to do when picking the widest arc through a corner. They're trying to carry the highest speed possible. But if you watch Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, or any decent driver, to be honest, they won't use this this line. But why? Well, this is a theoretical line and it's trying to maximize the minimum speed through a corner. But as drivers, you're trying to keep the highest speed throughout a lap, not just a single corner. So the speed you carry out of the corner can matter more than the minimum speed you carry through it. Now this does vary quite a lot based on the car that you're driving, but we'll get into that a little bit later. See, the thing is, the geometric line doesn't factor in loads of different things. The fact that racing cars steer with their front wheels and normal drive with their rear wheels, they have to brake and turn at the same time, the weight transfers from one side of the car to the other, loads of things are going on and loads of things are involved. And that means that the geometric line isn't the best. So what drivers actually use is the ideal line or some kind of version of this. This prioritizes the speed in, through and out of the corner. So what does it look like? Drivers tend to brake a little bit later than the geometric line in a straight line and then turn more aggressively deeper in the corner, getting a lot of the cars turning done early within the bend. The driver can then get on the throttle nice and early, just a little bit before the apex. The secret here is that the exit phase of the corner is all a little bit straighter, meaning the driver can get on the throttle earlier and harder. Then they can carry more speed than the following straight. And that makes a huge difference to lap time. Just think about it. It means that the braking phase is more efficient because the car is straighter for a little bit longer. However, the turning is sharper, meaning that you do carry a lower minimum speed in the middle of the corner, but you do also have the upside of slightly reduced tire wear. Then the acceleration is more efficient too. So although the minimum speed is lower than the geometric line, the entry and the exits more than make up for that issue. But first we need to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is the best way to learn about maths, data science and computer science by not just reading, but by doing. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics with new topics added every month. We love Brilliant here. It's the best way to get to grips with a new concept, something that you've always wanted to learn about. You've heard us speak about the Classical Mechanics course as it ties in amazingly with learning about Formula One. But also check out some of the lessons from the YouTube channel, Real Engineering, to learn more about materials, rockets, and century petal motion. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs, allowing you to complete lessons at your own pace in bite-sized chunks. You can get started for free for 30 30 days and get 20% off by visiting brilliant.org forward slash drive61. Finally, thank you very much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. If you're a beginner racing driver or a sim racer, pay attention now. I used to coach a lot of racing drivers, but I also coach beginners and amateur racers. So I have seen a lot of this next one, which is the newbie line. These are the common mistakes that new track drivers make. So keep an eye out for these in your track or sim driving. Typically, beginner drivers love to turn in too early for realizing what they've done a little bit too late and arriving at the apex early. This really tightens up the racing line, meaning the drivers have to turn more and therefore overslow the car. The drivers have to do a lot of turning late in the corner and so are then late on the throttle. And normally they also exit without using the entire track. The drivers can normally fix this by just waiting a little bit longer before they turn into the corner. And all of this is really about picking your vision up and looking through the corner. As a general rule of thumb, if you're getting on the throttle after you get to the apex, you've arrived to the corner too tight 
or too quickly. On the other side of things, if you're on the throttle way before the apex, you've typically arrived too slowly. The next is the karting wet line, which you will have heard about all the time in wet races. It comes from the fact that it's not always faster to take the apex in a cast. And this is complex and comes down to a variety of factors, but simply it's often down to the fact that preserving momentum in a go-kart is really important, as well as keeping the engine's torque as high as possible. Go below this and the cart will bog down. So open up the corner and it makes everything a little bit easier. Often carts can be quite underpowered, so carrying momentum is really important to a fast lap time. Then there's the fact that carts are faster when they're stable. So in some carts, it's often better to avoid the inside curb. And when you do this, you can normally carry a higher minimum speed. However, this rule isn't always true and sometimes taking a chunk of curb can be faster. It's really down to the specifics of the track and the cart. Then the wet line. It's amazing how much the racing line varies in the wet. If the track is used heavily, the dry racing line gets rubbered in, building up layers and layers of rubber into the track. This makes the circuit much faster in the dry, but much more slippery in the wet. And so if the car or cart you're driving doesn't like the rubber in the rain, you have to adjust your racing line. Often braking in the middle of the track off the dry racing line, then moving across the racing line to minimize the time that you're actually on the rubber. Then you turn in later than normal, doing the majority of your turning off the rubber, as this is where there is the most grip. At this point, you should have the car straight and pointing towards the exit, so you can get on the power and cross the rubber in the quickest time possible. When you cross the rubber on the exit, exit of the corner, this is the sketchiest moment. Sometimes this part of the corner is super slippery, so you've got to be really careful. But that's why I love racing in the rain. It's so much more of a challenge for the drivers. As ever, there are some exceptions. Sometimes bumps put you off the racing line where it's faster to drive around them or hit them in a certain way. Then there is camber. Think of Rivage at Spa. It's an off camber corner that runs downhill, so you have to take it slower than you would do if it were flat. Then there are elevation changes that we see at big circuits like Spa and changes in surface, which we actually don't see in Formula One these days too much, but you can see on smaller circuits. But working these things out is all part of the skill of driving, taking all of these things into account and picking the best racing line for the car, for the track, and for the conditions. Now, I mentioned earlier that the racing line depends on the car. You might be thinking that the fastest racing line would always be the fastest racing line, regardless of the car. But if you're trying to get the most out of a car, you will drive to its strengths. And this is all about the grip to power ratio. If you have high grip and low power, you will keep closer to the geometric racing line so you can carry the momentum through the corner. However, if you have higher power and lower grip, you'll actually move further away from the geometric line and be off the corner as the braking zones and acceleration zones are much more important. So, for example, if you're in a low-powered sports car, maybe something like a Caterham Academy car or a Mazda race car, your strengths are holding the minimum corner speed as high as possible. So you will take a more geometric line to have the widest arc through a corner and carry the most speed. However, if you're in a higher-powered car which has relatively less grip, maybe something like a V8 supercar, you will take a more ideal line. That's because they have so much power that it makes sense to get all of the turning done early in the corner so you can get on the throttle as soon as possible and accelerate the car down the following straight. But what if you have both power and grip? Well, again, it depends on that power to grip ratio. So something like a Formula One car, you would actually take a more geometric racing line because although they have lots of power, they also have lots and lots of grip. So you want to carry the momentum through the corner. And racing lines don't only depend on the car that you're driving. They also depend on the type of corner that you're driving. So imagine 130R at Suzuka or Blanchemont at Spa. Very, very fast corners where quick cars don't even lift. Here, it makes no sense to turn in late and take a late apex because you're doing no or very little braking or acceleration. So it makes sense to take the geometric line to carry the most speed through this sequence. Then in a hairpin, you will take an ideal racing line that varies a long way from the geometric line. This is because the traction zones in the hairpins matter so much. You want to get the car accelerating as quickly as possible out of that corner. The main exception and complications come when you have a complex of corners. 
saunas following other corners, like Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel at Silverstone. And this is where the really great drivers make a big difference, because the technically best line through one corner could ruin the next one for you, and so you need to compromise. Just look at this, it's the Villeneuve Chicane at Imola, a fast left-right complex. Here I take the best line for the left, but it leaves me having to overslow for the right and getting an awful exit. So I need to work back from the braking zone, slow up a little bit more, and come out of the left in the middle of the track to maximize the right and get a good exit. And if you have multiple corners like this, you really need to work on finding the best compromise. Then the other variable are the drivers. Some like to take a very ideal racing line and some like to sweep through the corner. Here is a video on Max Verstappen's racing line and here is a video on Jensen Buttons, two very different styles. And of course, you should watch both. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.